A reading from St Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, beginning at verse 20. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. No one knows how you feel. Anyone who tells you that they do is trying to be kind, but they're wrong. It's not just true of grief. Everyone feels things differently because we are all different. Life and everything we experience shapes us in different ways but it's particularly true of grief. When someone close to us dies, it affects us uniquely. We have feelings and memories that no one else has. When we've been close to someone, death doesn't end the relationship. It intensifies the feelings we have when we think about them. That's why when people write about grief, they describe such a complex range of emotions, numbness, feelings of unreality, sorrow, anger, resentment, loneliness, bleakness, and relief. Words alone can't describe how those feelings ebb and flow and wash over one another. What that feels like is different for everyone. Only you know what your grief is like. Grieving takes time. There is some truth in the saying that time is a great healer. Loss is less painful when we don't try to pretend that everything is okay straight away. But Grief has to be endured week after week, month after month, while we adjust to life without someone we love. We never get over the death of someone with whom we have shared our highs and lows. We just, in the end, find a different way of getting on with life. In the early days of bereavement, faith may not be much of a comfort. Our pain may be too raw. It's natural at first to be filled with a sense of loss and of absence. We may not be able to turn our hearts or our minds to what may be welcoming the one we love and waiting for us in our turn. The reading we heard from the New Testament was St Paul writing to believers in the Greek city of Corinth about what the resurrection of Jesus means for everyone. We could summarise the Christian message like this. God loves the world. He lived in Jesus Christ a life that was goodness and love personified, yet the powerful elite had him killed. God brought Jesus back from the dead as a sign and a promise that love is more powerful than anything in this world. God's love can never be defeated and it never ends. That is good news. Though when we are hurting, it can be hard to hear. 
Part of us wants to believe, wants to have hope, but another part of us doesn't want to risk being hurt even more if it's not true. Paul wrote, Since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. Our human condition is to live and to die. In the story of creation, at the start of the book of Genesis, God made Adam's body from the dust of the earth. When he died, it was buried, so that it returned to the earth. God brought that earthly body to life by breathing into it. In the resurrection of Jesus, God showed that the life he gave doesn't end when our physical bodies die. Faith means believing and trusting. The invitation to have faith remains open always. Coming to faith isn't usually something we choose. More often it's something we can't resist any longer. No one knows exactly how you feel. Anyone who tells you they do may be trying to be kind, but they're wrong. I believe that God made us, God knows us, and God loves us. I believe that all who have died are enfolded in his love. The invitation to have faith, to receive and return that love, is always open. God is patient. God is always ready for us. He is like the father in the story of the prodigal son that Jesus told. When our hearts are ready for us to go in search of him, he sees us in the distance and runs towards us. He flings his arms around us, weeps for joy, and he brings us home. In an earlier chapter of his letter to the Corinthians, Paul wrote, Faith, hope and love abide. These three and the greatest of these is love. God's love can never be defeated and it never ends. Amen.